Welcome back to How to Barbecue Right. It's May, it's National Barbecue Month. What better way to celebrate than putting a whole brisket out on the pit? That's exactly what I have today. Full pack of brisket. This one weighed in about 17 pounds before I trimmed a little bit on it. And what I did, I've got the flat and the point. That's what makes it a whole brisket. And I've just knocked some of the silver skin off of the meat side, toned this deckle in down a little bit to where it just smooths the brisket out. Now on the fat side, for this brisket, I want a quarter inch trim of fat. I don't want all the fat gone. So I'm just taking a little bit of it off and got a little bit of the skin off the bottom of the brisket. You can really see the transition here from the flat with the quarter inch of fat up until the, the point end of this brisket. And this is where all your delicious fatty brisket is gonna come from where that marbling is. We're gonna get some lean from the flat. Now for this style of brisket I'm doing today, I'm kind of taking that Central Texas style, keeping it simple, just using equal parts, good coarse salt, good coarse black pepper. It's gonna get a good light coating of that, not too heavy, because we want that brisket to shine through, we want that beef flavor, some of that smoke that we're gonna get out on the pit. We're gonna be using just a little bit of pecan wood. Now traditionally, you see the folks in Texas use that post oak, a little bit harder wood. I don't have that where I'm at, but I've got some pecan. That's the next best thing when you're doing a brisket out on the pit. So I've got equal parts of that salt and pepper in my shaker here, and I'm just giving the brisket a good coat. That's perfect for that side. Now we're gonna to come to the fat side, which is the side we're gonna cook up for this style brisket. And I'm gonna get a good dose of salt and pepper on this side as well. Make sure you get the sides. All right, how easy is that? We've got our brisket seasoning. That's about all we need on it. Still want that meat to shine through. But what I do want is it to hang out for about an hour. Come up to room temp. That's perfect time while I'm outside getting the fire going in the pit. When you're cooking along with me on this recipe, it's gonna be a long cook. You know, we're looking 12 hours. We're not really uh, worried about the internal temperature from the get-go, but what we are worried about is the, internal, the temperature of the pit. So today I'm gonna to be using my Thermacube, not only so I can watch the internal temperatures later in the cook, but I wanna know what that pit is on the rack surface. And the Thermacube lets me put two probes in, watch both of those at the same time. I'm gonna go outside and get the old hickory fired up. We're gonna get this brisket on in just a few minutes. All right, we're out here at the old hickory today. I'm gonna get this brisket right on the rack here. Do you notice when I put the brisket on the rack here, I've got my point to the back. And on my pit, that's where the heat's rolling in. Whatever your kind of cooker you're cooking on at home, you wanna make sure that the thickest part, that point end is situated to where most of your heat's coming in and your flat, the thinner portion of the brisket is up away from the heat. It's gonna cook more even, more of that direct heat's gonna to go to that point which needs it to render down. I've also got that probe for my Thermacube set right on the grate, it comes with a little grate clip and I've got it set to 250 so I can monitor this um, internal temperature on this old hickory. Now on this cooker, it's not as critical because it does a great job holding temps, but on your cookers at home, long cook time, you really want to know what that great temp is and you want to maintain steady even temperature. Today I'm wanting to hold this brisket at 250 degrees the entire cook time. It's going to be the perfect temperature to render that fat down. Brisket's a big cut of meat. It's going to take a long time. It's, it's tough. We want to break it down to where it's tender. That's exactly what we're going to do. Now the first part of the cook, we got it in the smoke. I've got some pecan on here little light smoke coming out the stacks. Exactly what I want. It's gonna be some nice flavor to go with that salt and pepper we put on it. It's gonna need about five, six hours to get to the right color. I'm not worried about internal temperature at this time. I'm just worried about pit temp. And when that brisket gets just the right color today, after about five or six hours, we're gonna get it wrapped up. Instead of using foil, I'm gonna be using red butcher paper. So we're really gonna get a great crust on this brisket. Now the brisket's been on the cooker here for five hours and I haven't looked at it. That's kind of the key to cooking brisket is you're not opening that lid and going in. It's doing its thing inside that cooker. Now it should be dark enough to where it's going to be about time to wrap it. And I want to take a look after five hours of holding it steady. You can see we've got some great color starting to get that darkness to it. That's exactly what you want in a brisket. The fat's still kind of soft. We've got some juice piled up. We're not basting this brisket. We're not opening the door any. We're just letting the cooker do its job, letting that smoke penetrate, letting that salt and pepper work on the outside. And this is what I want to see. Now it's time to wrap it. So after five hours, 
I can get it inside. I'm gonna get it wrapped up and we'll get it back out here and finish it up. Five hours in, we got plenty of color on it. Now it's time to get it tender. To wrap this brisket today, I'm using something a little different than your traditional foil. I'm using this red butcher paper. Uh, it's kind of something they use in Central Texas when they're doing briskets because it's a little more permeable. It's going to let some of that steam out, a little bit of that, absorb some of that moisture so the brisket's not just steaming as it cooks. We're wanting it to get tender. We're wanting to save this beautiful bark we've got going on it. That's exactly what the butcher paper is going to do. So I've laid out two strips of the red butcher paper because we're going to kind of do a double layer on it. We're just going to go over the top, kind of flip it over. Now there's no really right or wrong way to do it. You just want to get the paper up and around it. Let this side hold it. And the fat side is right here where I want to stay up. So we're wrapped. Now we can go out to the grill, get the brisket back on, continue cooking it till we get the temperature. We're taking this brisket today to about 200 degrees internal. We're going to kind of go by feel when it gets there. This is the point I want to get a thermometer in it. I'm going to go right through this paper when we get it out in the grill, one punch, and we're going to monitor it the entire time with our thermocue out on the pit. Let's get it back outside. All right, so we got the brisket back on the pit. Went ahead and stuck the probe right in that front part of the flat, just in the thick part. That's where I want to get a good reading. You just want to make sure you don't go through the back side of the paper. You want to be right in the middle of the brisket. You can see on the thermocue here, we're about 165. That's right where you want it to be by the time you wrap. So now all we got to do is get it shut down, hold this pit steady at 250. When it gets up to 200 degrees, we're going to be close to done. We're going to start checking it towards the end. We're looking at two or three more hours and we're going to be done with this brisket. Let's get the lid closed and get to cooking. All right, it's been 10 and a half hours. This has been a long cook for this brisket. You can't hurry perfection though, but you'll see on our thermocue here, We've hit 200 degrees. That's exactly where I wanted that brisket to go. I raised the lid and checked it with my thermopin just to make sure it's feeling soft. That's what I wanted to feel. Now, this cook's not over. It's time to get it off the pit, but with any piece of meat, especially brisket, you've got to rest it. Now, this brisket's going to need at least a minimum of two hours. So we're still looking at a 12 and a half hour time total. So I've got a dry cooler. The brisket just come off the pit. I'm gonna drop it down in a pan inside the cooler. So now the brisket just needs to hang out for two hours. And it's also, if you're serving this brisket four or five hours later on, it's gonna be perfectly fine in that cooler. So I can't stress how important this rest is for brisket. If we were to slice into it right now, we'd lose all that juice, all that texture, moisture that we worked so hard to keep in there. The rest, lets that stop reabsorb into the meat. That's why you see restaurants cook the briskets overnight, rest them all day until lunchtime, and then they're serving them. And they're getting that moist, juicy brisket the whole time. It's exactly what we're gonna have in just a little while. Stick with me. All right, I've had this brisket resting for two hours, and I can't wait any longer. I'm gonna have to cut it for you so we can see what we're working with. So I'm just gonna peel back the butcher paper. Mm. Look at that. Let's get it off this paper. All right, so we're out of the paper. Now we're gonna slice this brisket up. First thing I'm gonna do is just go ahead and separate my flat and point. Just gives me a guideline, helps me uh, get my slices right. I know the grain's running this way on this brisket flat, so I'm just gonna start slicing it. I'll just go ahead and cut a little bit of that tip so I can kind of make my slices. Ooh. That looks good. A little bit of that fat on top. I know it's going to be like just butter. Good smoke ring. That's what we want to see. Plenty of juice in this brisket. That's what it's all about. You can take that brisket slice, almost kisses on the knife. Take it and pull it. It's coming right apart. Mmm. Wow. That's the flavor right there. So we've got the flat nice and sliced up. It's time to cut this point up. I just like to hit it in half. This is where we're going to get some of that 
fatty ends, where your burn ends would come from. And I just kind of cut it across the grain the same way. It's a lot juicier than that flat because it's got more fat, more moisture in it. You can just see that juice run as we're cutting here. You can also make some burnt ends from this end. What we do with those is turn this piece of sideways, square them up a little bit, a little pile of burnt ends. And get me one of those. Mmm. Best part of the brisket right there. That's where all that flavor is. So whether you like it fat, you want it lean, or you're like me and you just love the burn ends, you can't go wrong with this Texas style butcher paper brisket. It was simple. All we did was hit it with some kosher salt, some black pepper, equal parts. Trim that fat down to a quarter inch on that brisket before we started. You gotta use the whole packer, the flat and the point. Get it seasoned up, get it out on a 250 degree pit, cook it till you get the right color on the outside, wrap it up in the butcher paper, two layers, cook it till it's 200 degrees internal and give it that all important rest. You're gonna have an awesome brisket. Every mm. That pecan wood just comes through, salt and pepper seasons that beef perfectly. It is melted in your mouth. You gotta try this recipe at home. Hey, thanks for checking us out here at How to Barbecue Right today. Subscribe to our channel if you like what we're doing. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter. We'll see you next time.